started, let's review what's on today's mm -hmm. agenda. First, we will discuss what is needed within company settings in order for our integration to run as smoothly as possible. Then, what syncs from our relationships and job information section from our job file to QuickBooks. Then, we will review work order conversion to vouchers and invoices from proven jobs. Then, entering in costs and invoices within QuickBooks to bring the information back to proven jobs. And we will finish today's session with what items can prevent a sink. Before we jump into the ins and outs of our proven job system and our integration with QuickBooks, let's talk a bit about what company settings need to be in place for our integration to operate as smooth as possible. Within your settings, company settings, and then within the integration menu, we are going to go down to the QuickBooks section. The first option we will review with this integration is the fill job invoice date from first invoice. If enabled, this will autofill the invoice date on the dates tab within the job file from the first invoice created date. The next option is the fill job paid date. What this will do is when your invoice or invoices are paid and your job total dollar amount is zero, it will automatically fill in the job paid date. The default for customer sync on job creation, if selected, will enable an option when a job is created that allows the user to select an option to allow the customer to sync or to not sync to QuickBooks on job creation. And our final option here is the export job date. If selected, allows the user to export the job to the QuickBooks based on selected job file date from the drop-down menu. By choosing a date from the drop-down menu, Proven Jobs Management will not sync to QuickBooks until that date has been entered within the date tab within the job file. In this example, we have chosen the approved date. Here you can see where our user entered an approved date on 719. Per our company settings, this job synced to our QuickBooks database. When our job was invoiced and paid in full, the invoiced and paid in full dates auto-populated upon sync with the QuickBooks database. Now that we have our company settings enabled, let's review what syncs between your proven job system and your QuickBooks program. I want to begin with our relationship section within Proven Jobs and talk about the Proven Jobs customer record. The customer record is also referred to as the billing contact. Here you can see how each field from Proven Jobs Management syncs over to the QuickBooks Online fields. As you can see, we have our customer record of Amanda Owen. Here, this record has synced to QuickBooks Online and the information has pulled into the customer record on QuickBooks. The name is the company name. The address is the billing address and shipping address. The customer home phone has synced to the phone number field. Work to the other phone field. Work email to email and work fax to fax. QuickBooks Desktop operates in the same capacity. However, their sync names are just a tad different. The customer addresses syncs to invoice bill to and ship to. The home phone syncs to main phone. Work phone syncs to alt phone. Work email syncs to the main email. And work fax to customer fax. And please note, the best practice is to always enter the customer information into the Proven Jobs Management database and let the information sync to the QuickBooks profile. The next relationship we will review is the vendor record. Any new record created within Proven Jobs Relationship section syncs and creates a new vendor record within the QuickBooks database. The Proven Jobs vendor name will sync to the company name, the vendor address will sync to the address field. Work phone will sync to the phone number field. The home phone will sync to the other field within QuickBooks. Work email will sync to the email field and the work fax will sync to the fax field. Please note that any modifications completed within the proven jobs management will sync the update to QuickBooks.
As you can see, we have our vendor record of AO Roofing. This record has synced to QuickBooks Online, and the information has pulled into the vendor record within QuickBooks. Again, QuickBooks Desktop also allows the same information to sync. However, we just have some slight name modifications, such as the vendor address syncs to build from address. The home phone syncs to alt phone, and the work phone syncs to the main phone. Some vendor best practices. It is recommended that all job-related vendors be entered into Proven Jobs Management, and then Proven Jobs will sync the new records to QuickBooks. Additionally, prior to the utilization of vendor records, syncing financial information back to the Proven Jobs file, it is recommended that company administrators set the vendor default cost type within the vendor record in order for the costs to flow into the corresponding cost bucket within the financial section. These default cost types are equipment, expense, material, and subtrade. The default cost type setup is located within the vendor record within Proven Jobs. The last relationship record we want to review today is our internal employee record. The internal employee records sync bi-directionally between proven jobs and the QuickBooks database. As a best practice, we do recommend that you enter your internal employee records within the QuickBooks software first and let that information sync to the proven job system. Employee first and last name sync to the first and last name fields within QuickBooks. The address field from proven jobs will sync to the address field within the QuickBooks. The employee home phone number. The employee home phone number syncs to the phone, mobile phone to mobile phone, and home email to the email field. Please note that for QuickBooks Online, employee rates do not sync and will need to be maintained in both systems. Let's take a look at an employee record within our QuickBooks Online database. In this example here, I have created my internal employee record contact for my company within the QuickBooks system. I have entered my employee rate type within the employee record. Again, the QuickBooks online employee rate does not flow into proven jobs. If you are going to be utilizing QuickBooks payroll, users will need to maintain employee rates within the QuickBooks online system. Now we'll navigate over to our Proven Jobs database and review the employee record there. Because the rates do not sync between QuickBooks Online and Proven Jobs, the employee rate information will need to be entered separately inside the Proven Jobs system. By going to our Relationships menu and the Contacts and searching for Internal and the employee name, I can click Edit to open it. Here I can see that my internal employee information has pulled into the Proven Jobs employee record. To add the employee rate types to the Proven Jobs employee record, I will need to go to the Time Card tab. Select the blue plus icon, and from the drop-down menu I will select the applicable Time Card rate, and enter in the rate of pay. This information is important for when the employee clocks in and out of a job, when the time card is transferred to the actual job cost labor within the job file. This helps us to see our actual costs and margins within our job and helps our teams to see if the budgets that have been set in place are going to be met. Now I want to focus on those of you who are integrated with the QuickBooks desktop platform. As with QuickBooks Online, the internal employee records sync bi-directionally between the proven jobs and the QuickBooks software. And we recommend that you enter your internal employee records within the QuickBooks software first and let that information sync to the proven jobs system. The employee details sync over the same way with a few minor differences. Employee name syncs to employee name and address syncs to employee address. However, the phone number syncs to alt phone within the QuickBooks desktop. The biggest difference, however, within the proven jobs and the QuickBooks desktop integration is that the employee rates do sync to the proven jobs database. So now I'll navigate over to the QuickBooks desktop and show you an example. 
I have created my internal employee contact from my company within my QuickBooks desktop system. Under the Earnings section, I have entered my employee rate type and the hourly rate. Please ensure that when creating your employee records with rate types, that you do not enter an employee rate type with a zero dollar amount. If entered, this can prevent a sync of the employee record to the Proven Jobs database. Additionally, the employee rate information will sync from the QuickBooks desktop to the Proven Jobs system. The rates must sync from the QuickBooks desktop record in order for the time card process to work in the Proven Job database. Now let's move on to our jobs portion of today's session. It is recommended that all customers and jobs be entered into the Proven Jobs Management System and allowing this information to sync to QuickBooks. Let's review our job information and what fields sync to QuickBooks. The customer is identified as the parent and this will be referred to in Proven Jobs as your billing company. The job number syncs to the QuickBooks Online as the display name. The job name syncs to the job company field, and the customer billing address will sync as the billing address, and then the job site address will sync as the shipping address within the QuickBooks Online. The job location syncs to and will populate on the invoice in the location field. Here is my new job information and proven job management for Greenway Apartments. Here we have our job number, our job name, and our customer name. Based on my company settings, my job date of approved has been entered and now my job will have synced over to the QuickBooks system. Now within our QuickBooks online database, we can see that the information has synced over to QuickBooks and has created my customer and my sub-customer. The first here is my parent customer, also known as a billing contact. This record holds the customer billing information. And below that is the job, also known as the subcustomer. This holds my job information. In the customer field, you see the first tier as the parent customer, and the second tier is the job number, which is the subcustomer within the QuickBooks software. Any costs, invoices or payments will need to be posted to the sub-customer record in order for them to flow back to Proven Job Management System and be viewable within the financial section of the job file. The QuickBooks desktop version syncs in the same way, but again has a few differences. The job number will sync to QuickBooks desktop job name and the job name from Proven Jobs Management will be the company name. The customer billing address will sync to QuickBooks Desktop as the invoice billed to address, and the job site address will sync as the ship to address. Within the QuickBooks Desktop customer menu, you can see the parent customer, and directly below the customer record, you will see the subcustomer. Again, the customer record has the billing contact information. This information was entered into the Proven Jobs database as the company and synced to our QuickBooks desktop system. The job record contains all of the job information that was entered into the Proven Jobs management and will contain any financial information associated with the job. Now let's get into the details of what financial information syncs between Proven Job Management and the QuickBooks software. Costs and revenue will be applied to the job by either converting your work order into a voucher, a sales invoice, or by creating an expense or invoice within the QuickBooks software. From our Proven Jobs Management platform, I have previously set up my work orders for conversion. For additional details on creating a work order, please visit our help library or contact a member of our support team. The first work order type we will convert is our sub-trade quote. Within this work order, AO Roofing has been hired to complete the sub-trade work for this job. There is an agreed upon quote of $2,500. To convert this work order, I will go to the upper work order section and check the box next to the work order I wish to convert. Now we'll go to the Convert tab, and here I can choose the type of conversion I'd like to complete. 
Convert to a voucher is a great option for all subtrade work orders that have one or more line item details and you want those same details to transfer to your QuickBooks voucher. The Convert to Voucher Summary option works in the same fashion. However, the conversion summarizes the work order and includes the work order number within the description area upon converting to QuickBooks. The first conversion I will review is the work order to voucher conversion. The system will verify that I want to convert a voucher. You can see upon conversion that the work order automatically closed and a voucher number was entered into the job file. If I go to my QuickBooks Online file and go into the Expenses section, I can see that the voucher has synced over. When a converted voucher syncs to QuickBooks, you will need to verify the allocated categorization. Per the system sync, it will default to the first category within QuickBooks. You'll need to modify the selection by clicking in the drop-down menu, applying the correct categorization, and selecting Save. Now let's move on to converting our invoice options. For today's training purpose, I'm going to utilize Work Order 1537. In the Proven Job Management, you will need to make sure that the revenue is entered into the system prior to work order conversion. I can see here that the estimated revenue is $5,000, and for this example is correct. Now I am ready to convert this work order to an invoice. I will check the box and go up to Convert and choose to Invoice. You can see upon conversion that the work order automatically closed and an invoice number was entered into the job file. If I go into my QuickBooks Online file and go into the Sales and Invoices section, I can change my date filter to today, and I can see that my sales invoice has converted over. In our next example, we are going to discuss the creation of expenses within the QuickBooks software and letting that information sink down to the job file in Proven Jobs. Please note that when utilizing the bill and expense creation within the QuickBooks platform without the use of a work order conversion from Proven Jobs, that any bill will automatically convert to a subtrade, and that any expense will automatically convert to an expense unless the default cost type has been identified within the vendor or supplier relationship record. Here I have created my expense from Ace Hardware. I've selected my category, entered a description, the amount, and most importantly, my subcustomer, so that this expense will sync back to the Proven Jobs job file. Now let's take a look how to create an invoice that will sync to the job within the Proven Jobs job file. Here I've created my invoice, and in the customer field, again, I have selected my subcustomer. To the right and under the invoice number is where the location, if one was set within the job, would sync. Now all I need to do is complete the line item details, enter the amount, and click Save. When receiving a payment, make sure to either receive it at the invoice level or ensure you are selecting the subcustomer from the customer drop down menu. Enter your amount received and click Save. Now I can go back into my job file and review the Financials tab. Totals tab allows you to see an overall view of your job's finances. Here you have your actuals versus your estimated amount broken down into your default cost types. We have our actual column that shows what was actually spent on the job. 
then our estimated column is what we have entered into our job file as our estimated revenue based on margin to give us an estimated budget. And the difference column shows us how well we are doing on our estimated budget versus our actual spend. In the lower section, I can see the total cost, the revenue, and a profit percentage. I can see the total invoiced, I see that a partial payment has been received, and I see the remaining outstanding balance due. Now I can go to the Costs tab, and I can see each voucher broken out and see the associated default cost type. Here I see my original work order that I converted to a voucher, voucher 0207. Additionally, I see my work order 1543, where I converted via the invoice summary. And I see my materials invoice that I entered within the QuickBooks database that has synced over to my job. Now we can go to the Invoices tab, and in the top section, I see my invoices that have been applied to the job. Invoice 0477, if you remember, was converted via the work order to invoice option. And then my invoice 0478 was created within the QuickBooks database and associated to the subcustomer and has flowed through to my job file. And in the lower section, I can see any payments that have been made. And here we see we received payment 0472 for $1,000. It was associated in the QuickBooks system to my job, so it has flowed through to my job. In addition to our financials tab that give users a snapshot of costs and budget and where you stand on a job, Proven Jobs has many beneficial reports that you can utilize throughout the system by navigating to our reports menu option. We will now open the floor for questions. We will go through the questions that have been submitted by the chat box, but please feel free to continue entering your question as times permit. Okay, everyone, again, thank you for joining us today. Now we'll go over our questions. We have a few that have already been asked. Harry, yes, the sync does apply to the desktop as well. William, typically this is not part of the hourly rate. There is a field in the employee record that allows you to add the labor percentage for the employees, and that's called overhead percent. Ira, currently the vendor record in Proven Jobs does not have a field for the tax ID. Ashley, the, uh, excuse me, Ashley, yes, our journal entries do sync to the Proven Jobs database as well. Hey, Daniel, your question says, how does the WIP accounting work with the QuickBooks relationship? These are two separate platforms. WIP accounting is specific to PSA desktop and QuickBooks is separate. Jamie, yes, you will need to close your jobs in PSA when done. Um, there's a separate process for that and we can talk on, um, offline about that later uh, to address your specific concerns. Uh, 
um, United Water. I'm not sure who this is, but it just says United Water. The question is, I don't have the pay rates and the QuickBooks online. How do I update manually the rates in PSA? Each, each employee in uh, Proven Jobs has their own employee record. And then there is a uh, pay rate tab, a, I believe it's called time card tab that you enter the pay rate. Okay, thank you, thank you. Because uh, we don't do the payroll through QuickBooks, we have a PO company, so we don't have the rates in QuickBooks. And I know that we have some changes in pay rates and I was wondering how can I change that in PSA so that reflects the cost. Yeah, so you would do it per employee under the employee record in Proven Jobs. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Godwin, this is a great question. Um, if you incorrectly put a job or you need to update a job within PSA, maybe the job name has changed or there's some additional contact information you can add, that can be done in PSA and it will sync back to the QuickBooks databases um, once that sync occurs. We have still have a couple of minutes if you guys have any additional questions. Um, yes. So the only time you, for QuickBooks Online, the only time you would need to run a manual sync is if um, you entered the information into QuickBooks and you just wanted to force that sync. And that would be done in the integration tab um, within Proven Jobs Management. And then go down to QuickBooks and click uh, Import. The video will be available in our PSA Help Library and also on our uh, company YouTube channel. Abby, to do a 50% down invoice, you could simply invoice that. You can either do it through the work order conversion by creating a down payment work order and converting that to invoice, or you can create it in the QuickBooks database and then um, let that sync to PSA. Christine, all when it comes to QuickBooks, you will invoice either, if you wanna invoice it from PSA, you'll need to do the work order conversion option, or you can invoice it directly through QuickBooks, choosing the sub customer and letting that sync back to PSA. Stuart, you are limited to the four uh, cost buckets that were listed in the video. Kelly, if you do have it set to that start date, as long as that start date is being entered, it will flow through to the QuickBooks database. If you're having any issues with that, please reach out to support and we'll, a trainer will be in contact with you to troubleshoot any issues. Tammy, for QuickBooks Online, it is an auto sync. We do have the auto sync for QuickBooks Desktop as well, and it's just kind of on a timer. Um, but you can also do a manual sync if you're uh, waiting for the QuickBooks to update to proven jobs. Kelly, I'm not sure when you say force a job to sync over, it should be an automatic sync depending how, how your settings are set up. Um, so that's something if you're if you're having issues, the jobs aren't coming over, please reach out. Um Terry, currently with the desktop, wherever you're you have a an app stall installed on your remote computer for the QuickBooks desktop, and that's the only computer that can do the manual up um, syncs to for that right now.
Minerva, for your question, we do business with a company more than once. Should we internally give each job a specific name? So how PSA handles that is you will have your customer no, uh, customer name. So let's say it's a property management company. Like in my example, I chose Greenway Apartments. In my example, they would have multiple units that we have worked on. And so our customer would be Greenway Apartments, but then we would have individual job names such as like the apartment number within there. So when that syncs over to QuickBooks, it will give it that sub customer name as the job name. Uh, and to kind of help that, and then it'll organize everything as customer or sub customer. Okay, so our final question, um, we'll wrap it up after this. What prevents a sync? We do have options, uh, let's see. So I'll go over those with you just momentarily. Things that will prevent a sync. If a customer is inactive in QuickBooks, it will not sync over. An employee record will not sync without a rate for the and within the QuickBooks desktop. If their rate is missing within QuickBooks desktop, the employee record will not sync or update. Um, and if there are more than 50 characters in a customer name or a sub-customer name, it will not sync. And then additionally, in QuickBooks Desktop, having a description in the job info menu uh, and the job description will prevent the sync. If you guys have any additional questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to us and we will be happy to answer everything offline. Again, thank you for joining and have a great rest of your day.